More D&D players are playing D&D online than ever before, and today I'm going to talk about seven tools that I have found particularly useful in playing D&D online as I have over the past two years. I refer to this as my D&D software stack, and your own stack may be different. You might have other tools that you really like. Not every tool that I'm going to talk about today is actually very popular, but they've, I've found every one of them to be really useful in running my lazy DM-style D&D games. The first tool I'm going to talk about is for campaign planning, and that's Notion. Notion is sort of like OneNote. It is a fantastic online tool to help you prepare notes for anything, but for our purposes, it helps us to prepare for our D&D games. I've been using Notion for about two years, a little bit more than two years now, and I find it's just a fantastic way for me to organize the notes that I need for the game that I'm going to run. It's free software for a single user. You can export your notes into HTML or Markdown. It has lots of different capabilities, but basically it's a great way to link together all of the notes that you have. I built my Notion template around the eight steps from Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master, and I've been putting up YouTube videos every week of me using Notion to actually prepare for my games. If you want to see me using Notion in action, you can take a look at those videos. I also have a video overall for how to use Notion for campaign planning and an article. You can find links to all of these in the show notes below. The software that we use to communicate with our players during our game is probably the most important software that we have in our stack. I use Discord for communications, and so do many DMs and players across all of D&D. It's very, very popular to use, even if people are using other software like Foundry or Fantasy Grounds or Roll20. A lot of the times people are still using Discord as their main form of communication. I expect it's the number one piece of software that people are using to communicate with their players and with their DMs online. I have an article and a video with details on how to use Discord to run your D&D games all linked in the show notes below. I also have a D&D themed server template which you can use to clone your own Discord server and set it up for your own group when you're running D&D games over Discord. With Discord, we can share audio, we can share video, we can put up channels for text, you can keep a story journal up there, you can share images. If you don't use a virtual tabletop, you can actually share images of a map so that the players can get a general orientation of where they are. The reality is we don't need any other software other than Discord to run a D&D game online. If we want to have a virtual tabletop where we can share a map and move tokens around to represent either combat or exploration in our D&D games, my favorite tool of choice for this is Owlbear Rodeo. It's not the most popular virtual tabletop, but I find it really supports my I need for very easy to use tools and tools that I can use right during the game. So I often will set up a map for my game in the middle of a game rather than trying to set it up ahead of time because I don't always know where the characters are going to go. I find that the speed and the ease of use of Albert Rodeo is really refreshing for both me as a DM and for the players that are playing on it. It doesn't have a lot of the fancier features of other virtual tabletops like integrated rule sets or dynamic lighting or other sort of features like that. It's a very basic virtual tabletop, but it's extremely easy to use. It's very easy to share a map with your players players. It's very easy to get tokens on there and get it moving around. And what I particularly find useful with this that I haven't found with any other virtual tabletop is the ability for me to grab a map and import it during a game. It's so fast for me to put up a map in the game. If I don't know where the players are going to go or if my game is very improv it's still very easy for me to get a map online and get tokens on that map so that we can all keep playing. I really love Owlbear Rodeo. It's free software and you can find a article and a video about more details on Albert Rodeo, including how I set up all of Castle Ravenloft in 10 minutes using Albert Rodeo. All of those are linked in the show notes below. We also need maps to put on our virtual tabletop, and we all have different sources of maps that we might like. Some DMs really like to draw their own maps, but me, as a lazy DM, I always prefer to find other maps that other people have made. My favorite maps are from Dyson's Dodecahedron at DysonLogos.blog, and he has more than a thousand maps available on his website. You can just open them up, right-click, save them, and throw them into your virtual tabletop. What I like to do is whenever I think up a general location, I just start scrolling through his maps until I find one that fits the general idea of the map that I need. One thing I really like about Dyson maps is that you can use them for all different kinds of things. I use them in my Eberron game, I use them in my Forgotten Realms games, my Midgard games, and even my Numenera games. The style of maps that he uses are general enough that you can often reskin them to suit the kind of layer that you need for your game. There's lots of different places where you can get maps, including full color battle maps, but there's something about the simplicity of Dyson Logos maps that I really like, and I've been using them now for years, and I just adore them. With 1150 maps available, it's very likely you're going to find the kind of map that you need for your game. You're going to notice a particular theme in the tools that I'm picking. I really like to use tools that help me build the game right at the table. So if I have a virtual tabletop and a set of maps and a way to manipulate tokens that I can do during the game instead of having to do the prep beforehand, that lets my game be a lot more flexible. If I don't 
don't know what direction the characters are headed. I don't know exactly what I'm going to need for that particular game. But if I have the tools on hand to very quickly improvise a whole map, then that gives me a lot of capability to let the game go in whatever direction it's going to go during the game. Albert Rodeo and Dyson Logos maps help me do that. In the same vein, I really like the tool token stamp. I like to make custom tokens for certain monsters and for the characters, and I have a particular style that I like for those tokens. Token stamp lets me take any image, upload that image, and dump out a token that's ready to drop right into any virtual tabletop, but certainly into Albert Rodeo. Let's say I want to add Orcus into my dungeon, because who doesn't want to add Orcus into your dungeon? First thing I do is go to Google, Google Orcus, go in the images. I really like this one. This image is pretty cool. Click on that, get a nice full resolution version of that, and I'm going to grab a roughly square-shaped screenshot. On my MacBook Pro here, I'm using the lasso size screenshot so I can grab just the area around his head that I want to make a token out of. I make a screenshot of that. That is saved to my desktop. I go to Token Maker. I choose an image, go to my desktop. I pick the screenshot of Orcus that I've got. I'm going to drop that in where I like it. I even want to give it a little different color for its background. I'm going to give it like a dark red to make it really sinister. I click Download. That's downloaded to my Downloads folder. I go in, back into Albert Rodeo. I click the little Add an Icon. Click the plus sign. Go down to my Downloads folder. Find the token. Drop it in. I'm even going to label it. I'll say it is size 3 because he's huge and Orcus, and I have a token. I click done, and I drop that token in, and bang, I've got my Orcus token ready to go. Very straightforward to do. It takes me about a minute to make a good token. So Token Stamp is a fantastic online tool to build tokens for your virtual tabletops in just about a minute. Adding some background music to our game is something that a lot of DMs enjoy doing, and it helps bring a little bit of atmosphere to our game. But sharing audio online is actually pretty tricky. Some virtual tabletops include a way to share on audio online, but it can be a little finicky. The folks who created Albert Rodeo created another desktop tool called Kenku.fm. Kenku is a pay-what-you-want set of software. It's a local client that you install on your Mac or your PC that lets you broadcast music as though you're another member of your chat team in Discord. It lets you stream music to Discord as though it's another member of your audio and video chat. It's a little tricky to set up Kenku FM at first because you have to create your own Discord bot that passes the music from Kenku FM into Discord. But they have a really good page here, linked in the show notes below, that tell you exactly how to set up that bot. And once you get it set up, it'll work for the rest of that game. The client itself lets you stream any music from any online service. It could be Spotify, it could be YouTube, it could be tabletop audio. Whatever you're able to pick up in a browser window, it's able to transfer through and send into the audio video feed of your Discord server. Make sure to tell your players that they're able to control the volume of the Kenku bot on their end. If it's either too soft or too loud, they can control it on their end. They do that by right-clicking on the Kenku bot user in the voice channel and then changing the user volume to whatever volume they want to have it so that it's just the right volume so it's in the background but not over playing the voice of the DM or of the other players. Now for software to actually run 5th edition D&D, nothing is really going to beat D&D Beyond. D&D Beyond is an excellent way to build characters, to look up monsters, to look up source books, to share source books with your players, to look at all of the text of the adventures, to run combat. There's all different kinds of things that are included in D&D Beyond. About the only feature it doesn't have is an actual virtual tabletop. The only problem with D&D Beyond is it doesn't include third-party products. If you want to include sources from something like Tome of Heroes by Cobalt Press or material from Dungeons of Drakenheim by the Dungeon Dudes, you're going to have to manually add all of that material as custom features to D&D Beyond. But when it comes to rolling dice, managing character sheets, managing monsters, running encounters, managing dice rolls, and sharing those dice rolls with the other players, all of that stuff is included in D&D Beyond, and it's really excellent. About half of the players and DMs that I surveyed say that they're using D&D Beyond to manage their characters for their game. So those are seven tools that I have found particularly useful to run D&D Online. But your own stack may be different. There's lots of different alternatives to every one of these pieces of software, and there are some pieces of software that actually do two or three of these different functions. Whatever software you use, make sure that it's offering the kind of services, the kind of features that are helping you run your game. It's really easy to get caught on all the bells and whistles and special features, but a lot of times those special features might actually get in the way of a good time between you and your players. Make sure to ask yourself if the tools that you have chosen are really helping you and your players share in this game that we love. If you enjoyed this video, you can find more DM tips by subscribing to the Sly Flourish newsletter. You'll get a weekly D&D article sent directly to your inbox, as well as a free adventure generator PDF. You can also support me on Patreon. Patrons get access to all kinds of exclusive tips, exclusive material to help them run their games, a bunch of exclusive adventures, the City of Arches sourcebook, access to a dedicated Discord server, and all kinds of other features for a very low price. You can also pick up any of my books at the Sly Flourish bookstore, including Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master, The Lazy DM's Workbook, and The Lazy DM's Companion. All of the links for this and everything else that I've talked about in this video, you can find in the show notes below. Thank you very much, have a great day, and get out there and play some D&D.